11 teams to go in my road to predict all 131 teams this college football offseason. We have one conference left. I thank those of you that have stuck with me throughout these predictions. We're moving on now to the final conference we're previewing, Conference USA. And we're starting out with the Florida International, or otherwise FIU, the Panthers. So the Panthers, not necessarily one of the better programs in the nation. Uh, in fact, they have struggled over the past couple of seasons to uh, get to any sort of winning record. But uh, the Panthers maybe have a couple reasons for some optimism this upcoming season. So will FIU start to win uh, and be more competitive this upcoming year, or will 2022 be another year where they are down in the depths? What's up, Tailgaters? My name is Tailgate Nate, and welcome to my channel. I'm predicting all 131 teams this college football offseason. Chances are I've already done your favorite team. If you're not a fan of a team in Conference USA, I've already done your team. Go hit the subscribe and look through playlists on my channel. But, hey, if you are a fan of a team in Conference USA, no worries. Uh, predictions are coming later this week. For fans of the Panthers out there, you guys are going to know this team a lot more than I do. So if you feel like I missed something, you want to add something, please leave it in the comment section down below. I'd be happy to hear what you guys have to say. Let's talk about FIU in 2022. They're my 11th and last place team in Conference USA. So this conference is losing three members. Um, of course, they have moved over to now go play for the Sun Belt Conference. Uh, but FIU is a member that stayed put. Now, my 11th ranked team coming into this season last year, they just weren't great. They were 1-11, 0-8 overall, um, and just did not have that great of a year overall. Um, offensively, 367 yards per game with only 20 points per game. Uh, and defensively, well, this was the worst defense in Conference USA last year. Almost 500 yards a game with almost 40 points per game allowed by this defense. Now, the offense was towards the bottom of the conference, yes, but wasn't horrible by any stretch of a, a mile. I mean, those stats are fairly poor, but I mean, again, was not as bad as some of the other offenses within this conference last season. Um, Let's take a look at some talent that this team is losing last uh, from last year. Well, you are losing that starting quarterback. Max Bortenschlager had 2,935 yards, 19 touchdowns, and 12 picks for the Panthers last year, and you're losing him. So going to need another guy to come in and play quarterback for this team. Uh, Devontae Price, who was your leading rusher last year, had 682 yards and six touchdowns. He's gone as well as a guy by the name of Sean Peterson, who had 217 yards, couple touchdowns for this team a season ago in the wide receiver room well you lose Bryce Singleton who had 847 yards three touchdowns last year and then Shamar Thornton was not super involved in the offense last year uh, only 27 yards with five catches didn't play in 2020 but had a really good year in 2019 and he has since transferred out of the program you also have a tight end in Sterling Palmer that is gone um, and then a couple offensive linemen uh, gone as well Miles Frazier and Sion Finau couple names that are leaving the offensive line on the defensive side well Kevin Oliver Jason uh, Mer uh Mercier couple names that are gone off of that defensive line uh Kevin Oliver is a big one had 30 tackles in the sack last year linebackers Daniel Jackson Jamal Gates and Eric Mitchell are a couple names you'll see gone Daniel Jackson was the third leading tackler for the Panthers last year and then uh a a um some brothers leaving the defensive back. Richard and Rashard Dames, a couple pretty solid defensive backs for this team are gone. Rashard led the team in passes defended with seven. And Richard led the team with tackles uh, with 95. And then Benny McRae is another defensive back that also leaves this team. But as for talent that is still here on this team, well, Grayson James is a quarterback that is still here uh, for uh, FIU had 162 yards in the touchdown last year, but you're also getting a transfer who very well may end up being that starter for uh, the Panthers here this upcoming season. And Gunnar Holmberg, uh, a transfer over from Duke. So he's probably the guy that you're going to look uh, to get that starting role this year. Um, and, and we'll see how good he can be. Uh, Max Bortenschlager was fairly solid for this team during his time with the program. In the running back room, again, you lose your leading rusher, but Lexington Joseph, EJ Wilson are a couple names that you'll see there. They were your second, third leading rushers last year, respectively. In the wide receiver room, well, Tyrese Chambers still comes back, and he had 1,074 yards and nine touchdowns last year on 45 catches. That's an average of 23.9 yards per catch, um, and he was really good for this team last year. Figures be that number one option again. Randall State Felix uh, comes in as well. Uh, otherwise, there are a couple transfers uh, coming into this team. Jalen Bracey, Sherrod Johnson, 
uh, are a couple names there at the wide receiver position that are transferring over. You also have a guy by the name of Jacoby Hewitt from Indiana. Otherwise, Rivaldo Fairweather, the tight end, who was the fourth leading receiver last year. By the way, Randall St. Felix was the third leading receiver last year. So you do have that tight end in Fairweather coming back as well. On the defensive side of things, uh, there still are some names coming back. Devon Strickland on the defensive line had three sacks last year and was the third leading tackler with 53 tackles. He returns as well as Ty Danzi. I uh, believe he had a sack last year uh, and then 23 tackles for him as well. And the linebacking group, Gaithan Bernadelle is coming back for this team. Uh, he had 44 tackles a season ago. But then a couple linebacker transfers coming in. Alex Nobles is coming in and a guy here in Donovan uh, Manuel that comes over to this team as well. Uh, also on uh, the defensive line, you're getting uh, Letary Kinsler as a defensive line transfer. And the uh, defensive back position will no real transfers to speak of, but still some talent coming back. Pierce Withers and Jamal Potts, a couple of names you'll see in the defensive backfield for the Panthers this upcoming season. So uh, definitely some question marks need to be answered about FIU. And by the way, Mac, or excuse me, Mike McIntyre going to be that new head coach here for FIU. So with the Panthers this year, there are a lot of question marks. This has not been one of the better programs in the nation over the past couple of seasons. How do they improve and do they get better? Is Gunnar Holmberg uh, going to live up to uh, some expectations that Panther fan may put on him? How are some of these transfers going to work out, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Looking at the schedule for the FIU Panthers, looks a little something like this uh, in non-conference. Well, you have a home game against Bryant that you probably should well be able to win that first game of the year. Uh, you have a road game against Texas State there as well. I think that's going to be a tricky game for FIU. But then a couple very winnable games later down the line uh, with New Mexico State and UConn as your first two games of October. Um, and uh, New Mexico State, a team that uh, pro probably still not going to be great this year. UConn, well, that's a team that still probably overall is not going to be great, but they're expecting improvement with Jim Moore coming in as that head coach. Uh, when you take a look elsewhere in terms of conference schedule, well, you have a road game against Western Kentucky, also some road games against Charlotte, North Texas, and UTEP games at home against UTSA, uh, the conference champs from last year, Louisiana Tech, FAU, and Middle Tennessee. So diving a little bit deeper into the schedule, Bryant, I think that should be a win. And then more likely than not, they'll probably end up splitting New Mexico State and UConn. Um, but, I mean, look, there are lots of very winnable games here on the schedule for FIU. I think 3-9 and nine is in the cards for this team. It's just they're going to have to beat Bryant, New Mexico State, and UConn. And you'll see my ceiling and official prediction here in a little bit. But Bryant, New Mexico State, UConn, when it boils down to it, are three winnable games for this FIU team. And before that New Mexico State and UConn game, they're going to be tested because Texas State, well, is a is a program that um, is getting some transfers in, uh, figured to maybe make some slight improvements this year, maybe not necessarily leading to more wins, but is a team that has some talent on it. And Western Kentucky loses a lot from last year, but with what they have coming back and with what they have coming in through the portal as well, that's still going to be a really, really solid team in Conference USA. And FIU gets them on the road. Uh, some other road games, Charlotte, watch out for the 49ers. They just missed out on a bowl game last year. I think they can push their way back to the postseason this upcoming year. North Texas, watch out for that team. Even though DeAndre Torrey is gone off that team, North Texas can still be dangerous this upcoming year. UTEP, hey, that's a team that made a bowl game last year. And I feel like a lot of people are still underrating coming in to this upcoming season. Yes, they lose Jacob Cowing, some other weapons there as well, but they return that running back duo. I believe Gavin Hardison is back as that quarterback. So lots to still like about this UTEP program. And when you look at games at home, UTSA won the conference last year and they have a lot coming back. Uh, Zakari uh, Franklin, Frank Harris, and they're getting Traylon Smith, the transfer over from Arkansas, to help lessen the blow of Sincere McCormick. So still some great players there for UTSA. Uh, Louisiana Tech at home. That could prove to be a winnable game. Louisiana Tech only went 3-9 last year, although I thought they were better than that 3-9 record. Watch out uh, for the Bulldogs. FAU in Middle Tennessee. Going to be a couple tricky ones there as well. Middle Tennessee, well, hey, they lose a lot from last year. I think that could be even a winnable game for FIU on the schedule. But FAU... 
no, that, that's an Alcine that's going to be pretty solid this upcoming season. Now, I don't do game-by-game -game predictions. I do a more percentage-based Alex. Let me predict the team's record. So if the game's in red, I just don't see you winning the game. If the game's in orange, I still don't see you winning. But it is college football, and upsets can happen. Yellow are your 50-50, your high upset potential games. Games in yellow-green are games that you should win, but you got to watch out for the team on the other side of the ball. And games in green, I have you winning. There is no really big, overarching, threatening non-conference game for the Panthers this year. Um, and there are lots of winnable games in non-conference, as I talked about. I, I think they should be able to beat Bryant in the first game of, of the season. Uh, and while they might not be favored in these uh, latter two games, but, um, okay, look, Texas State going to be a hard game for them to win on the road. I don't know that they'll be able to pull that one out. But New Mexico State, UConn, those are winnable games for this FIU program. And my opinion, they probably split them, end up winning one, losing one. Maybe they can, uh, I think they can win both. But I think more likely than not, they end up winning one and losing one. In conference play, well, I think they're going to have a tough time winning any conference game this upcoming season. This FIU team still has a lot of work to do on both sides of the ball. How is Gunnar Holmberg going to work out? Or maybe Grayson James ends up getting that start. Um, how, how will the running backs uh, replace Devontae Price, who was fairly solid? Uh, you do have Tyrese Chambers back there, Randall St. Felix, Fairweather. But how does some of the wide receiver transfers work out to lessen the low of guys like Bryce Singleton? Uh, is the defense up to task here? And can it improve a lot from last year? There's just too many questions with FIU. Now their most winnable game in conference, I do have being that middle Tennessee game at the end of the season um, as the most winnable game in conference. But I'm still favoring the Blue Raiders even with all they've lost. FIU, I think, can make some slight improvements this upcoming year, but I'm not expecting them to go out and win four or five games. I got this team sitting at two and ten. Now, I do expect the Panthers to be improved this upcoming season, but again, I think winning any game in non-conference play going to be a little bit, or excuse me, winning any game in conference play. Non-conference, there are lots of winnable games that I've mentioned. Conference play, there, there's definitely going to be some challenges for FIU this year. They got some work to do. I got them at two and ten in 2022 let me know what you guys think about this team in the comment section below and be sure to like comment subscribe anything like that it does help support the channel remember to play hard but tailgate harder i'll see all you guys in the next video goodbye